Hello everybody, this is Andrea Tosato from the Technical University of Denmark and today I'm going to talk about HPC loss factors in the Nordic power market. So, the reason behind this, uh, this analysis is that HVDC uh, interconnectors are usually way longer than AC ones uh, because of their technical properties. And for this reason, the losses that are generated by these long interconnectors are uh, non negligible. Currently, in the market driven process, losses are not considered at all. So, in those situations where uh, there is no price difference between the two connected zones, uh, the cost of losses must be borne by um, uh, local transmission system operators. So here on the on the right we have a table that shows what is the hour of operation with zero price, price difference and uh, the corresponding cost of losses for uh, the five interconnectors uh, that are represented on the on the left figure. So as you can see in 2017 the amount of losses was uh, the cost of these losses was 12 million euros, while in 2018 it increased to 18 million. And this shows clearly what's the entity of, of the problem. So. Um, the current market theory uh, does not consider losses and uh, the price of, uh, of electricity consists of two components, the cost of energy and the cost of interest. So in a situation where the, there is enough capacity in the interconnector, then the price of the two zones that are connected uh, will be the same. And uh, when there is a congestion, uh, more expensive generators will be dispatched in zone B. Uh, to meet the demand and uh, for this reason the price in this area will increase and there will be a price difference uh, between uh, the two connected zones. So uh, what Nordic TSOs have proposed in order to solve this problem is uh, to uh, include linear HPC loss factors uh, for uh, HPC interconnectors, uh, adding a third component to the price of electricity that is the cost of losses. So what happens is that uh, in a normal situation with no congestion if we have, uh, for example, a 2% loss factor, then the, there will be a price difference between the two zones that is uh, equal to the marginal cost of losses. Uh, so, for example, if now the, the loss factor is 2%, the price will be 2% higher in the, in the other zone. While if there is congestion, the price difference between the two zones will be great enough to cover this marginal cost of losses, and thus there will be no impact on prices. So the way uh, TSOs handle losses is the following. They first estimate losses in uh, the before market operation, so in D-2, and then they place price independent bids uh, in the market. So if the actual the, the estimation, the, the forecast uh, is very close to the uh, to the actual losses, then there is no problem. Otherwise, any mismatch uh, will be uh, covered in the balancing market. And this whole procedure is done in order to um, decrease the cost of losses by purchasing the, the necessary power in the day end market. So for HVDC interconnectors, the, the methodology is pretty much the same. The only difference is that uh, since these are uh, usually co-owned by the two TSOs uh, operating the, the, the two connected areas, then uh, there are special agreements between the two parties. For example, for, co for contact, the interconnector between uh, East Denmark and Germany, all the losses are purchased in, in, uh, in Denmark because here the price of electricity is always uh, is usually uh, lower than in Germany. And then uh, the German TSO will compensate, will financial, financially compensate the, the cost of, of these losses to the to an, the, the, the Danish TSO. So what they have proposed is to include HVDC loss factors in the market period so that losses are now uh, no longer estimated before uh, market operation but they are calculated while clearing the market so the ones who create losses now pay for the losses and if this calculation is, is uh, exact then uh, the result is that the society will pay less also because losses in this way are uh, trying to be minimized well, if this calculation is not uh, precise, then uh, there will be extra power that is uh, procured in the, in, the, in the market. So, what I'm going to focus today, uh, the talk will focus on, on one aspect that is how um, uh, we can have a better approximation of losses or if um, linear loss factors are a good representation of losses. And then a second one uh, that is, uh, is it? the inclusion of only HPC loss factor a good solution or shall we consider also AC losses? So in order to make this analysis, uh, I've built um, a Nordic test case, so uh, 
a test case representing the Nordic system, where all the generating units from Sweden, uh, Norway, Finland, and Denmark are included. And then for the time series, I'm using the wind, solar, and load profiles from 2017. This data is taken from Norco, uh, so this is the actual data, and uh, the, all the, the information about the grid and the, and the generating units is taken from, uh, from the, the TSO's uh, data set. And uh, in order to perform the analysis, we need to be at the market model. So what I did was to aggregate uh, all the nodes corresponding to a bidding zone into bidding zones. And then I considered the actual transfer capacity uh, from Norco. The focus of, uh, of the analysis would be on only the Nordic, inter-Nordic uh, HVDC lines. So the four that are highlighted on the, on, the left, on the right figure. And then the analysis would be on uh, linear versus these was linear loss factors and HVDC only versus AC plus HVDC. So uh, the current market clearing algorithm uh, in the Nordic system uh, relies on available distribution capacities and it's not flow based, meaning that uh, there is there are no I mean the flows uh, that are calculated between zones it does not follow, do not follow the, the physical laws, but they are intended to be only bilateral exchanges between uh, the the two reasons. And uh, this algorithm can be, uh, I mean, uh, is depicted on the right. And uh, it's uh, the aim of this is to minimize the cost of generation subject to generator constraints, uh, transmission line constraints, and the zonal, uh, zonal power balance equation, which uh, results in the definition of prices. So if we include losses, uh, then uh, we need to make sure that uh, the um, variable that is defining the flows uh, is non-negative. So we actually define the flows as the difference between two non-negative variables, uh, which can be um, greater than zero only uh, one at a time. So if the flow is positive, the uh, corresponding uh, variable for the negative flow must be zero. And this is achieved by means of uh, binary variables. And then losses are uh, calculated with uh, a linear approximation of the quadratic lo loss functions by means of uh, these so-called loss factors that are, that are alpha and beta. And then uh, the losses are included in the zonal uh, balance uh, equation by means of uh, uh, loss distribution uh, matrices. So if we have then uh, piecewise linear loss factor as uh, the, um, one of the analysis focuses on this, then uh, um, the model is a bit more complicated, but basically what happens is that the uh, capacity of uh, the lines is, is divided uh, in, into several segments, and then only one of, so we have one variable uh, for the flows for each segment and one uh, variable for a uh, binary variable for each segment as well. And only one of these uh, flow variables uh, can be non zero at a time. And then the, uh, the losses are calculated by mean of this um, loss function where we actually consider the um, loss factors corresponding to the segment that is utilized. So the first analysis uh, that is linear versus piecewise linear uh, relies on uh, the, the fact that losses are nonlinear, and so uh, linear uh, loss factors might not be a good representation of, of this loss function. For instance, what happens if we have several parallel paths uh, with HVDC lines? Then uh, having linear loss factors that are not really a good representation of the loss functions will uh, unfairly penalize uh, one HVDC line over the other. And this is for the case, uh, for example, the case of uh, Skager, Account, Scan, and Storbet, that are the three um, interconnectors that are connecting uh, West Denmark to the rest of Scandinavia. Mm -hmm. So here we can see that, uh, first of all, uh, quite, uh, piecewise uh, loss functions are a better approximation of, uh, of linear loss function. And then what happens is that so when uh, the solver will have different path uh, and it has to decide which one uh, to use, then it will first use the first line, the one with the, the smaller slope. And so it will use it up to the, the, the full capacity. And then it will move to the second one and then to the third one. But 
always like proceeding uh, with a single line until the capacity is reached. While if we have piecewise uh, linear loss factor, then uh, the solver will start with the first uh, segment, the one with the smallest slope, and then it will check what are the segments uh, with uh, the second smallest slope. And if this is not the case of, of the second segment of the line, it will switch to another line and so on and so on until uh, the total uh, power to be transferred is, uh, is reached. So, as we can see now, we have a better distribution of the flows over the lines, while before we would use only one line if that was enough. So, uh, the results here, um, so the, the, this is actually calculated using as a reference the, the simulation without loss factors. And then the focus is on uh, HVDC losses only. So I'm only comparing HVDC losses. So as we can see, with uh, piecewise linear loss factors, losses are, are further decreased, meaning that we have uh, first a better approximation of losses, and second, we also have uh, a better distribution of the flows. If then we look at the cost savings, then uh, we can see that by further decreasing the losses, of course, we will have greater uh, savings and we can achieve savings uh, of 30%. So the recommendation here is to use these wise in the factors. Uh, the second analysis uh, uh, consists of uh, showing that AC loss factors must be included if we want to include losses in the market grid. Why? Because if we have a parallel AC path to an HVDC one, as it is the case of uh, Fenniscan, the interconnector connecting Sweden to Finland, then what happens is that the solver uh, will think that using the AC path uh, will not create losses. Well, this is not true. So. Uh, we might choose to redirect the flow over the AC path uh, that might create even more losses. And this is uh, shown here in the, in the results of this analysis where we can see that with only HVDC loss factors, yes, we decrease HVDC losses, but we increase AC ones. Well, this does not happen if you also have AC loss factors. What happens with the, the cost savings is that of course, by minimizing the total losses, as it happens with both AC and HVDC loss factors, we achieve uh, great savings, while this does not happen with only HVDC loss factors. And in particular, here they are negative, even though the uh, overall losses are, are decreased. Why does this happen? This is because if we look at uh, how the linear uh, loss function works, is that, okay, we might have, for example, a flow of 40% of the total capacity, and then what, the, what is actually generated, what are the losses, is this. But the solver, we see these ones. So there is a mismatch between uh, the actual losses and what, are, what losses are calculated. And this means that we have to put extra power in the data market, and this results in extra costs. So, if we have uh, this wise loss factor instead, this does not happen, and only the necessary power is to chase in the market. As we can see here now, the, um, the savings uh, reflect the decrease of losses for even if we have only HVDC loss factors. While if we have both AC and HVDC loss factors, we can minimize up to 12% the, the total losses in the interconnectors, resulting in cost savings of 4.8 million euros per year. So the recommendation here is to introduce also AC loss factors if we aim at introducing HVDC loss factors. So to, to wrap up, uh, today I've presented the, the result of uh, some analysis of the Nordic uh, power market about the introduction of uh, HVDC loss factors. And the results of, of the analysis show that, uh, first of all, if we uh, want to introduce loss factors, we might want to do it uh, with piecewise linear loss factors because uh, we have a better representation of the quadratic loss functions and we also achieve a better distribution of the flows in, uh, on over the interconnectors. And this is important also in case of merchant lines where we don't really want to discriminate one line over the other. Second, if we really aim at minimizing losses, then we uh, might want to include AC loss factors as well, uh, as only HVDC loss factors is not uh, 
a good solution to the problem. And uh, finally, uh, overall, in introducing losses in the market really uh, as positive, uh, as a positive, positive impact because uh, by internalizing losses, then uh, the TSOs uh, have not to procure losses any longer and uh, the society will pay less because losses are truly minimized. Thank you for the attention and uh, I hope the, this presentation was interesting.